Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over UFC Fight Night St. Louis, and we're going to be completely focusing on how to win the $150,000 first prize, I think it's one fifty, dollars in the big GPP. And in doing so, we're going to give you guys some, some tools and some tips on how to use Saber Sim and the different Sim tools and uh, just some techniques of lineup construction that I think are particularly interesting on this card um, that you can use for, you know, both this card and, and many others. So what, what's the good news? Well, the good news is that there are several fights and fighters, which are extremely uh, have extreme upside and a combination of a strong inside the distance lines and strong, and cheap prices and things like that um, that provide the opportunity to, to really go after a big score. Uh, in addition to that, the good news is, is that usually the other side of that fight, you know, the, the not, it's not just the favorite, like you have both sides of the fight that rate to have a very, very high upside and a lot of scoring. So that's, that's the good news. Um, here's the bad news. The bad news is is sort of the good news, right? The bad news is that it's extremely obvious who these plays are. Um, and to, to tack on to that, more bad news that there are only 12 fights. There were 13, but with the the dropping of the, the, the Jusette Gooden fight, there are only 12 fights. So not only does everybody know who the good plays are, but there aren't that many plays to make because there are only 12 fights as opposed to 13 or 14. So what, what's going to happen is that ownership is going to be really concentrated around the good plays, which, I mean, why not? It certainly makes sense. Which then, you know, creates a scenario where, or, or, or a slate structure where even if you hit the optimal, if you just play the best plays, you're really running risk of duplicating first place with, with a bunch of people. And you might think that, you know, what's the big deal? As long as I get first, it doesn't, that's it's not the it's not the way it works. You know, if you're splitting first prize with 50 people, it's a disaster from a mathematical perspective. Um so in a 12 fight card where the ownership is pretty obvious it becomes very difficult to get unique and that's what you need to do in gpps to try to win that big money you need to get unique and yet you also need lineups that have a ch that have a shot right so how do you strike that balance on a card like this um just to review i mean look, the main event's very very strong play you know uh derek lewis and nasty mentor are both strong derek lewis is 8,400 with it with the minus 140 inside the distance prop. You have Rebecca, who is like five to one and minus 150 to finish. You have this Terrence McKinney fight against Rivovich, who, I mean, Terrence McKinney is like 7,300 and finishes the fight about 35% of the time. His, his metrics are insanely amazing for his price. And as a result, Rivovich is, has incredible metrics on the other side. You have Despain, who is rates to finish in the first round, which of course creates some leverage opportunity for the other side in 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 Costa, uh, in, in in Costa, not Costa. Um, can't get his name right for some reason. Anyway, the, his opponent, uh, and then you have Hooper and Borshev, both of whom rate to rate to finish if they win. Um, so that's an obvious target, and then you have. Um, you have uh, Ruzaboev, who in this in in the in the co-main event, he's like seventy four hundred, and he's not only about pick him with money line, but also extremely high upside as far as his finishing ability. So you have all these kind of key fights that everybody can see really, really easily as being good plays, and people are going to play him. Okay, so. What do we do here? You know, how how can we play this knowing that you're going to need to get a, a lot of points probably to win this slate, yet you don't want to be too dupli dupli duplicative? 
you don't need to you don't want to be as duped as as you could be if you just played quote unquote the best plays so there are a couple of techniques that you can uh you can use and that's what we're going to go over here um and it's going to be using uh saberson and uh there's a couple of settings that we can use to help with this and a couple of little tricks that we can use so the first thing we did, by the way, is I uploaded my projections and you could, you know, use your own. It doesn't really make too much of a difference with respect to learning what I'm doing here. I'm happy to use, I happen to be using my projections as of now. They could probably change many times before fight time. And I uploaded everything. And then what I did was I built 5,000 lineups. Okay. And just to give me a pool of lineups to choose from, because I don't forget, forget about these exposures for a second. We built 5,000 lineups with just regular settings, pretty much, just to give us a, a pool of lineups to, you know, to, to fish from when we start making our settings. So how do you get unique? Like, how, how do you, how do you, how do you play this? How do you get good upside lineups that have a chance to take down the whole cheese? Well, there's only a couple of ways to do that. Okay. Um, one is not just relying on what is most likely to happen, but realizing that there's a range of outcomes for every fighter. And just because, say, Derek Lewis is 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 kind of likely to finish, that doesn't mean he finishes all the time. And given the fact that he's going to be really, really high owned, you know, you can't just say he's just going to just finish. Where you take a, just to give an example, you take a fighter like, I don't know, like Veronica Hardy, right? Is she going to finish as often as 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 um, as Derek Lewis? No, of course not. But when she does, like in that 95th percentile outcome, right? She's going to be so low owned that you're going to want to have her. So, you, you know, you have to... you. you so to try to get a, a a lineup that's unique, you're going to have to have a little bit of vision, kind of like mathematical vision to, to say, listen, it's not what's most likely to happen, but what could happen within the range of outcomes that is not going to be played by too many people. And what that means is basically this MMA default setting which is, is again, I talk about it here, but very, very few people talk about the setting. Um, and what this setting does, if we kind of, you know, dive into this, and I don't know why they put this in here because nobody really should play this too often, but this is the most aggressive way of ranking lineups because you, if you see like the underlying formula, it, 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 you know, weights projections right 0.5 times some of my projections and then what it does is it, it adds half of the 99th percentile outcome okay and then you ding the lineup for some of the adjusted ownership so so what it is doing is it's not just figuring out what's most likely to happen it's giving you the 95th percentile and I'm not saying that you should be playing this setting throughout 150 lineups on all slates, but it is an important setting to to be aware of if you if you're on a slate where you would need to get you know some uniqueness. Um, what I did is I created another kind of sort of very similar type of of setting called Sheets Default, and what this does if we kind of get into here uh sheets default would be where is the little eyeball here hold on uh oh sheets default that is similar except instead of um doing the 99th percentile we use the 95th percentile so it's a little less aggressive but it's still pretty pretty out there okay so on a slate like this I think you have to allocate a decent amount of your exposure to this setting. Um, and again, what, what be, you know, comes an interesting question is, is, is how much 
Um, I think that, again, it's such a chalky slate that you can that you can allocate as much as maybe even a third of your lineups towards um ooh, why did this disappear towards um uh the MMA default setting or the sheets default setting so we we we're ranking these let's do this again this is by sin diversity but oh, why is this all messed up here sheets defaults I want to put 50 in. Why can't, why, why isn't it letting me? Oh, there it is. So 50 sheets default settings. Okay. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll save these. Now, where, where do we save these? And is there anything else that we want to do here? One thing we could do is, is change the min uniques from one to two to give ourselves a few more combinations. I'm mean, again, I'm not even paying attention to who we have here. It's, it's really not even remotely relevant. Um, um, so let's save these, these 50 MMA default lineups. So let's save these. We'll just put them in a CSV and is that 50? Yeah. So let's go file, save as, um, where's MMA? Where's my felt my files here mma we'll call this oh i don't know 50 defaults or 50 sheets defaults okay so that's 50 of them so what else what else can we do here remember we can't just make the best plays it's not it's just not possible um so in addition to kind of assuming a 95th percentile outcome instead of what's most likely to happen. What else can you do? Well, another thing you could do is assume the most likely outcomes, but leave money on the table. Okay. And let's start by, again, going back to the main, you know, the main setting, the SIM diversity 10 setting. Now you could start with the, with the SIMs and use the contest SIMs. As a matter of fact, just to, just to, just to uh just to do that it's going to work out to be the same but let's 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 show you guys what to do so we download these we i just want to save these for now just so that i can see this screen which is throwdown so let's it's not letting me create a contest sim which is weird well, let's see if we can't do this. So let's go uh, add contest sim. We're going to put um, MME. And we have to see how many entrants are in this. So we have to go back into DraftKings. It usually saves these things for you, but it doesn't have it for some reason. Uh, it's not that important. That's these 10,000, you know, 25 for first, we'll just, we'll use the, our build to, you know, uh, estimate what the field of lineups is going to look like, and we'll run the contest sims. Now you'll see, it, it's not going to be that much different, I don't think, than just rating them by sim diversity 10. Now just again, to show you guys what we're looking at here, so sim diversity 10, what that is, is 100 times the sim optimals. Um, so it is taking into account, you know, the sims to some degree. It's not really taking into account the 99th percentile outcomes or anything like that. Um, so it's it's up it's high upside, but it's not, it's not throughout, you know, through the roof. So when we sort these by risk-adjusted ROI, like if we were going to put in 50 lineups, for example, just using the sims, this is what they would look like, but that's not going to be good enough. Like these are way too chalky, but we can leave money on the table. Now the question is how much do we leave on the table? Now you, you can hear me out here. Okay. But you can make the case that you can leave 
Well, I'll show you how much. So let's pull up the um, just the salaries for a second. And let's take a look at at, at, a, at one of these fights, the one we just talked about, the Terrence McKinney fight. So Terrence McKinney is seventy three hundred, and he's going to be really chalky because he's got a plus two twenty inside the distance line. But what you can do is leave enough money on the table such that optimizers might get away from him and go to somebody higher, like specifically from the same fight. So Rebovich is also has really, really good metrics. So, so what you can do is leave 1600 on the table in these lineups so that McKinney, so the McKinney lineups are going to, kind of like be confusing to the optimizers, you know, because the optimizers are going to want to play Rebovich if there's 1,600 left. So let's make sure that we leave 1,600 remaining. You know what I mean? So this way, all these McKinney lineups are going to be lower owned than they otherwise would be. So you could argue that you could leave 1,600 on the table throughout your lineups um, and still end up, you know, you, you, getting um the high upside plays at a little bit lower ownership so let's let's see what that looks like first let's uh change this to mean uniques one and now let's filter by salary okay so by salary we'll do less than so what did I say? You could leave 1,600 on the table. So we want it to be less than 48,400. Okay. And on a card like this, you might be able to get away with it. Okay. And it was a good test. Just to, let's see how easily we can get to these lineups. And you can get to them very easily. Okay. So, so let's take, you want to do mini uniques more than two? Can we even get there? Yeah, we can. And one way to kind of test this out is to keep going min uniques two, min uniques three until it doesn't let us anymore. So it didn't let us go min uniques four. So what you can do is then go back to min uniques three and then take one more off. And then we'll go min uniques two. So now you'll end up playing these kind of good plays, but the lineups are going to be a little less chalky because they're going to leave all that money on the table. So let's save those. Okay. And it's actually over here. So let's save these. Save as um and then they we're gonna call these uh Sims forty eight thousand four hundred. Okay. So we've built a hundred lineups so far. But we actually may have built less because it's possible that these some of these lineups overlap with the other lineups. So what what else can we do to get unique? I think we're already just kind of like kind of off the wall a little bit. So what you can do is one of two things. You you could either force in low ownership by doing geo mean filtering. In other words, just tell the the optimizer that or the Sims or whatever, tell them that you don't want any lineups that have a some uh, product of ownership below a certain amount. Um, and we could do that and we could, uh, you know, figure out what ownership we need to kind of avoid dupes. Um, the problem with that is that you get really overweight on very low owned single fighters. Okay. Because when you're just doing product of ownership, which is what say which geo mean sort of is, um, you're not you're only isolating like one piece of the lineup. You're not suggest you're not factoring in how you know what's the difference between a two one two percent guy versus I mean like three twelve percent guys. Okay, it could be it could be better, even more unique to go three twelve percent guys. So, what I think that we should do is just play more lineups with a little less on the table. 
Um, and again, we might be getting, you know, some duplicate lineups and we'll, we'll, we'll figure out how to scroll for that and scan for that in a minute. But what you're going to want to do is we don't need to go 1600 because we just did some of those. What's the next kind of break point? Well, you go back into this, into this, um, this group, into the salaries here. And you'll see that the next kind of really popular underdog is either going to be either, um, well, it's either going to be Hooper at 7,700 or most likely actually um, Ruz Ruzaboev at 7,500. I mean, he's almost a pick em with a big upside. So, so uh you can leave money on the table so that if Ruzaboev wins it could be a little lower own so which how much do you leave now if buckley were a better play at 8700 i would say leave it all the way up to him but maybe he is you know let, let let's go back and take a look at buckley i mean buckley actually he's like plus 110 inside so that's actually pretty good so that i think is the next break point is to go from 7,500 up to uh, 8,700. So you leave 1,200 on the table. So why don't we do that? Let's take 50 lineups. Take this filter out. Instead, let's do, do um, salary. And what did I say? 75 to 7. So 1,200 left. So it's got to be less than 48.8. So less than 48,800. And we'll save this filter. And we'll have 50. Okay. And um, now we'll save these. So... As far as raw like numbers of lineups we've saved, we've saved 150. And um, we're going to save these. Hold on. Uh, save as recent. We'll call this Sims. Well, Sim. What did I say? Was that 48.8? Let me just make sure. Um, 48.8. So we'll call this SIM 48.8. Huh? So my question now is, is how many lineups have we made? Because there's got to be some that kind of overlap. Um, so before we get on to the final stage of this and completing these, let, let's take stock of kind of where, where we are. Like how many lineups we've actually created. So First thing we want to look at, we're going to pull up this, this dupe calculator here, which you can access from, from my Discord if you want it. Um, um, where is it? Dupe test. So what we do is we're going to insert everything that we've done already and see really how many lineups we have. You know, we're playing 150, but we want to play, we don't want to do any of the same lineup. So let's go back to these files. Hmm. And we're going to start with uh, 50 sheets defaults. Put those in. Defaults. Put those in. And we're at the, so that's 50 so far. Then we'll pull up SIM 48.4. Boom. We'll put those in underneath. Oops. And then we'll put in, um, just make sure I did that right. I want to make sure I didn't, it's possible I did something bad with my cut and paste. So just to make sure, let's put these where they're supposed to be. Yeah, I would have messed that up. That's so funny. 
And then we go to the last one, which was the SIM 488. These over here. Boom. So we put in 150 lineups, but how many of them have we do we have more than once? You know, as you can see, I mean, we had some with finally 1,200 and some leaving 1,600. I'm obviously, there's going to be some that are in both. So let's see how many really unique lineups we have. And when you click remove duplicate lineups, you'll see it's, it's done. Yeah, so there's like a whole bunch of, actually 50 of them. There are 50 dupes. Does that make any sense? Hmm. Maybe I did something wrong. I mean, let's let's start over. I mean, why not? So let's 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 start again. So let's first salary less than 488, which is fine. And we'll put that up here. We'll, we won't worry about this cheats default for a minute. And then we'll do the 48.4. Is it all exactly the same? think so and then we'll put in the sheets default Maybe there are there, maybe that you don't gain anything by by saving that extra. Let's see. He's over here. And let's just see. I, I, I would be I'd be very surprising if there's a full 50 dupes, but maybe. Maybe. No, so there are only 13 dudes, so I messed up the first time. Okay, great. So now we have 138 lineups, okay? So we only need to put 12 more in. Um, and it's just a question of, of, of where you want those 12s to come from. Um, what you could do if you want to continue this theme of, of leaving money on the table, you can go to that next break point. But let, let's let's... Let's um, let's take let's actually let's take a look at that. The next break point would be the next chalky underdog, which would probably be Hooper, like I said. And it would be a question of Hooper getting up to Borshev. So Hooper is eighty seven, Borshev is eighty five. So leave eight hundred on the table. So less than forty nine two for twelve more. Let's see. Let's see what we get. Forty nine four hundred, and we just need twelve. It's not like that big a deal. Um, what you could do is you could also re rate re rate these by MMA default or by sheets default. So now well, we already have those probably. So let's just keep these twelve, and let's see if we get if if those are unique. Like if we get enough to fill it out. Boom. So the 12 lineups there. So we'll put those again in this dupe calculator. And then we will C 
see how much how many dupes we have. That would be uh, only one, so that's good enough. So this is probably the set that we're going to go with. You know, we'll have one dupe in here, but that's fine. We'll we'll fix that manually. Edit entries. And the, the real key, by the way, is to have the discipline to not look and see who you have. I mean, because we've we've done the process, right? We, we, we've done this. There's no need for us to really see who we have here because we've done the process. Why, why should knowing who we have influence anything else, right? So let's... Um, we're going to keep this one and just so that we don't forget, we'll um, just so we save something for a big buy-ins to deal with. We'll just do this for now. Um, and then we're just kind of done. So it's, 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 it depends on what the type of slate is, what tools that you use, you know, a few, few weeks ago, I was completely focused in on, using geomean filtering, okay? But on a slate like this, where you have a lot of good plays that are really obvious, you can, you I think that doing both, prioritizing 95th percentile, may, meaning that you bring those other fighters into the mix, in addition to keeping the good fighters in the mix by reducing salary, it's probably a good combination of things that you can do on this slate. Um. That will do it. Uh, big, big day tomorrow because not only we have bets going on, but we also have the qualifier, and I still haven't figured out what lineup I'm going to put in there. I'm probably down to like six or so options. And uh, I'm pretty sure that my MME builds are going to be very different than anything else I'm rooting for, but that's fun. Uh, good luck, everybody. We'll uh, catch you tomorrow.